welcome to your mobility release clinic on flexion dominant alignment. Today we're going to show you how to restore optimal movement if you're suffering from a flexion dominant posture. This is usually characterized as hunchback or swayback. Today we're going to show you how to use a few stretching techniques and activation exercises to realign your body and bring you back to an optimal posture. Our first segment is soft tissue mobilization. You're going to need your fluid kit, which has a variety of different tools to help reduce the tension and overactive muscles associated with your movement and balance. You're going to want to spend about 60 seconds on each of the areas defined, reducing the tension with a ball or foam roller, followed by a neuromuscular stretch to help to elongate the muscle and restore the appropriate range of motion in all of the areas of the body targeted. Let's begin. Our first release has to do with the latissimus dorsi using a foam roller. Ryan's going to roll onto his torso towards the chest wall so that the roller is positioned behind him and just underneath of his shoulder blade. Using his arm to support his head, he's going to breathe out, engaging his core muscles as he draws his arm overhead into flexion, rotating the palm towards his temple. Breathing in, he'll draw the arm back down towards the middle of his body, relax the tension, and then sink into the belly of the muscle. Make sure that if there's any pain to stop the position or reposition your body so that you're not positioning as much weight on the roller. You would go through six to 10 breathing cycles, breathing out as you draw the arm overhead, breathing in as you bring the arm back to the middle of the body, and this will reduce the tension in this muscle. Now that you've done the soft tissue release work on the latissimus dorsi, we're gonna show you a neuromuscular stretch to increase the extensibility of the muscle to reestablish the appropriate biomechanics of the shoulder joint and the small of the back. To get in position, Ryan's going to split his stance so that his right leg is leading. We're going to be stretching the left lat to start with today. He's going to bring his arm over the head and rotate the palm upward. From there, he's going to pinch through his hips, draw his arm in towards the wall in front of him, and use that as an anchor point for his arm to stretch from. Now that he has a little bit of tension underneath of his underarm, he's going to breathe out, tuck his tailbone under, and then laterally tilt his thorax to the same hemisphere. By doing that, it's going to stretch the length of the muscle from where it attaches at the lumbar spine around the rib cage into the chest wall as it attaches to the top of the humerus. Once we feel that initial relaxing, he's gonna release, push his elbow into the wall, flexing the muscle, stimulating a reflex response from the muscle to relax. After he flexes it for six seconds, he's gonna release, breathe out, pull his tailbone under and shift his weight laterally once again. As you do that, you'll notice that the muscle relaxes and gives you more length. You can go through that series several times, three to six times, as you start to see the uh, muscle start to lengthen or you start to see your fingertips tip back further as an indication of an increase in range of motion at that shoulder. Once you're done, make sure to go back and apply the soft tissue release on the opposite hemisphere and then go through the same neuromuscular stretch protocol. The next soft tissue release is going to be of the pec minor. The pec minor attaches the shoulder to the rib cage and it has a tendency to be tight and pull the shoulders forward, adding to the excess kyphosis and flexion dominance of the body. So today we're going to use the lacrosse ball, isolate the muscle by pushing the ball into the belly of the muscle under the pec major and then retract the shoulder back and around the rib cage. Ryan's going to do that by pressing his body weight into the wall on the ball. It's going to be compressing the muscle between the ball and the rib cage. He'll hold the position for 30 seconds before he starts to move and use his breathing pattern to increase the length of the muscle. So once the muscle has been isolated for 30 seconds, he's going to breathe out, pull the rib cage down, and then glide his shoulder back and down towards his spine. As you do that, you'll notice that the muscle becomes stretched under the pressure of the ball. As you relax it and let the arm go forward, push more pressure into the ball and see if you can increase the natural passive tone of the muscle with each subsequent retraction. You'll want to go through three to six of the breathing cycles to fully relax and lengthen the muscle. Remember to breathe out as you pull the shoulder back, breathe in as you let the shoulder roll forward, and when you're done, finish up and we'll move into the stretch. To complete the neuromuscular stretch of the pec minor, you're going to want to have your arm behind the torso while maintaining the stability and the natural position of the shoulder on the rib cage. Ryan's going to step forward on his left leg, having his arm draped behind him with this exercise band. 
He's going to make sure that his spine is in a neutral alignment so that his head is in line with his shoulders and his shoulders are over his hips. You'll notice that his shoulder is not dumping inward and gliding forward because the pressure is so great from the pull on that muscle. So it's downward and retracted. He's going to breathe in to expand his lungs, breathe out, rotate his head to the right and gaze to the left, retracting the shoulder blade at the same time. The tension of the band will help to reduce the pressure here of the muscle and naturally allow it to glide back. He's going to breathe in, look forward, draw his head back to neutral, breathe out, tuck his chin to the right and look to the left and glide his shoulder blade back. The natural tension from the band will help to pull his arm back and it will each time pull that muscle back into a state of stretch and give him more length each time. You're going to want to go through this breathing pattern and retraction once again about three to six times before you proceed to the other side of the body, complete the soft tissue release, and then do the same protocol for the neuromuscular stretch. Our next release drill has to do with the hamstrings and specifically the biceps femoris, the lateral hamstring. The hamstrings have a tendency to pull our pelvis under, creating a rounding of our spine, altering the shoulder mechanics and the way that our head is positioned on our spine. It's very important that we reduce it. So we're gonna use our fascial release ball underneath of the leg. To identify the muscle, you're gonna to wanna to bend the knee and rotate the toe out and then feel behind the knee, you'll feel a tendon flare. Once you've identified the tendon, that is the bicep femoris on the lateral aspect of the femur. Trace it up underneath the belly of the muscle about two to three inches and then you'll find a tender spot. At that point, you're gonna brace down your weight onto the, the femur, pushing the leg down onto the ball. This will compress the muscle between the femur and the ball. Now holding that pressure on the muscle, we'll hold it there for about 30 seconds until we get a reflex release response from the muscle. And then you're gonna to begin to breathe in and straighten the knee, rotating the toe internally until you feel the muscle want to fight back or start to quake. That reflex response is not appropriate and we don't wanna go beyond that. As you breathe in and lengthen the muscle, you'll notice that it will soften and you'll be able to sink into the ball as you let the knee go back down into flexion each time. Go through the process roughly six to 10 times, breathing in as you straighten the knee, breathing out as you let it come back down into flexion, and then we would move into the stretch of the biceps femoris. To complete the stretch for the bicep femoris, you're gonna need an exercise band anchored to a wall or somewhere behind you. You're placing the band around the groin, pulling the femur back posteriorly. Now from this position, Ryan's gonna stick his leg forward, keeping the knee extended and the toe pulled up to his shin. The goal here is to make sure that the movement happens through the socket of the hip and not through the lower back. So he's gonna make sure to maintain the erection of his lower lumbar spine. With that in mind, he's gonna tip his hips back until he feels the first natural point of resistance where he's gonna feel the hamstring either attachment at the tibia or up in the pelvis. With that muscle at its natural passive range of motion, he's gonna breathe in, arch his back, pull his arms behind him, keep his chin tucked, pull his toe towards his shin and flex his quad and then relax. Breathe out and bend the knee, flexing the hamstring for six seconds. Relax it, breathe in, pull the toe towards the shin, engage the quad, keep the knee straight and the back straight, and then sink in deeper and deeper each time. So he's gonna go through that cycle of flexion for six seconds, relax it, straighten the knee, pull the toe up, engage the quad, arch the back, and then sit back deeper. Recall that the muscle should stretch, allowing you to extend further and further getting into flexion through the pelvis without it reaching into your spine and pulling the back under. You would go through again, six to 10 cycles of breathing before you would release it and then go through the soft tissue release and stretching protocol on the other hemisphere. Our final soft tissue release drill has to do with the lateral portion of our calf musculature. This is called the lateral gastrocnemius. It attaches from the Achilles up to the femur and it pushes our feet into the ground. This contributes to flexion dominance, so we want to reduce it. So Ryan's going to get the ball, his lacrosse ball, underneath of his calf. He's going to trace his Achilles up along the lateral portion until he feels the first tender spot in his calf muscle. 
With the weight of his leg on the ball, he's gonna drape his opposite leg onto the shin to increase the tension until there's a sufficient amount of pressure being pressed down into the belly of that muscle. If it's too tight, you'll feel the muscle guards or will wanna flex and it won't let you, again, get the muscle to relax. So make sure to gauge the tension by the response from the muscle. Once the pressure is applied to the muscle for roughly 30 seconds, he's gonna to begin to move through the joint that the muscle attaches to by pulling the toes up towards the shin and internally towards the middle of the body. As he does that, he's gonna breathe in, flex his quad, and then relax, release, and then sink into the belly of the muscle, looking for an increase in passive tone so that the ball will sink in deeper each time. As we've been doing this with the other muscles, make sure to go through six to 10 breathing cycles and movement through the joint, and then move on to our stretch. Now we're gonna complete a neuromuscular stretch of the calf musculature. Ryan's gonna position himself in front of the wall, extending the leg behind him that we just rolled on. First, before we go into the stretch or use additional body weight or loading, we're gonna facilitate the stretch by engaging the muscles that are on the opposite side of the joint. So Ryan's gonna flex the tibialis muscles by pulling his toes in towards his shin. With that as tight as it can get, he's then going to leverage his body weight to create additional force to help to pull these gastrocnemius muscles into stretch. We don't wanna go so far that the foot rotates out or buckles in at the ankle called pronation. So we don't want it to roll inward. You wanna make sure that the tibia or the kneecap tracks over the second toe. Now with that as your general position, you're gonna lean forward, pull the toes towards the shin, breathe in and flex the quad. As soon as you get into that position, bring the other leg up into the air, draw it across the body gently, and then breathe out, relax, sink into the stretch deeper and push through your palms to see if you can get more leverage into the ankle. And then again, get the heel to come down closer to the ground. Let's repeat that by breathing in, pull the toes towards the shin, flex the quad, lift the leg up into the chest on the opposite side, pull the toes towards the shin on the affected leg, breathe out, relax, and sink. At the bottom of the stretch, you can push through the toe box, lifting the heel off the ground, flexing the gastroc, hold it there for six seconds, then relax it, sink down, breathe in, pull the toes towards the shin, flex the quad, lift the leg up, bring it into flexion, and then relax and sink further. As usual, we're gonna go through six to 10 cycles of this relax and then flex response to get the muscle to relax even further trying to get more extensibility out of the muscle and a deeper angle at the ankle. Once you're done, switch to the opposite side, complete the soft tissue release, and then go through the same drill. Our second segment has to do with the activation of the underactive or phasic muscle groups of the body. Certain muscles are overactive, altering the joint centers, which then alter the mechanics of those joints. Certain muscles then become weak or phasic or limited in their capacity to recruit, Today we'll show you how to engage those muscles to reestablish the natural position of the joint center, increasing your efficiency and movement and maintaining the appropriate mechanics through the body. The exercise we're gonna to use to strengthen our overall posture is called a laying prone cobra. This is gonna be recruiting the lower back erector muscles along with the deep cervical flexor muscles together to maintain a neutral spinal alignment. Traditionally, when we have flexion dominance, the posture resembles a hunchback. So Ryan's going to go into this rounded, cathodic position, increasing a C-spine curvature. As his hips tilt under, he's going to tuck his hips under, it draws the weight of the body backward and the head will glide forward to compensate, decreasing the lordatic curve of his uh, cervical spine. So today we're going to use an exercise to pull the head back over the spinal alignment integrating the deep cervical flexor muscles holding the neutral cervical alignment while co-contracting the erectors of the lumbar spine. So he's going to lay down on the table. In order to do that, body weight's going to be centered. Palms are going to be behind him. His head's going to be tucked, or chin's going to be tucked, and his head's going to be in line with his spine. So from here, he's going to breathe in, lift his shoulder blades back and down, come up through his lower back and then breathe out and go down towards the floor. 
Now, as you breathe in and lift up, make sure that you still maintain the contracture of your abdominals to support the lower back. We want to go into extension. We don't want to go into hyperextension. Also, make note that as you come back towards or off the table, that the shoulders don't shrug up towards the ears. Push the fingertips down away from the shoulders towards the heels to keep the shoulders unloaded. Last point, make sure that the legs don't lift up with the torso. So we don't want the toes to come up off the table going into hip extension at the same time. They should stay neutral and the feet should stay within the hip line as you come through this position. He's gonna come up for a count of two, down for a count of four, for two sets of 20 repetitions, giving yourself 60 seconds to recover in between each of the sets. And that would take us through the activation before we get into our final integration. Our third and final segment is integration. This is the coordination of multiple joint movements happening simultaneously while your body is able to maintain the appropriate force couple or muscle coupling relationships to support the joint centers and appropriate biomechanical movement patterns. This is how we upregulate your central nervous system. This last exercise is considered an integration exercise. Recall that integration means that we're going to be sequencing multiple muscle groups to support the body as it would be intended to provide functional movement. Today we're going to engage a whole sling of muscles called the posterior oblique sling. This involves the gluteals on one hemisphere of the body with the lats on the opposite. They work together to provide propulsion. So as we step forward, the glute will stretch in the swing leg, the lat will stretch in the outreached arm, and they will flex together to pull your body away through space. So we're gonna teach you how to engage these muscles together, synchronize that action, while maintaining the adequate lumbopelvic hip stability and spinal alignment. So to do that, you're gonna lay a supine with your face up, you're going to have a, a foam roller under the affected leg that we're going to target, and this is going to be on the right side for Ryan. He's going to flex his leg down by pushing his leg down into the roller using his glute, and at the same time, he's going to co-contract the flexor on the opposite hemisphere. Now, the goal here is that by engaging these both or these sets of muscles, that he's not distorting or moving at the hip or the lower back. So the goal is to maintain adequate lumbopelvic stability while learning how to co-contract these mechanisms and then feeding it into the upper body by contracting the lat on the opposite side. So he's going to push the left arm down while he pushes the right leg down, breathe in and lift the leg up together, and then breathe out together, engaging his abdominals to control his pelvis as the pressure of his quad on the swing leg pulls it down. So we're going to try to contain that. He's breathing in, lifting the leg up, flexing the glute and the lat by pushing the arm into the table together and then slowly letting the leg down. Good job, Ryan. So you would want to go through two sets of 20 repetitions. You noticed how slow and methodical this was for Ryan. Make sure to keep the deep cervical flexion by keeping your chin tucked. If you're having a hard time keeping your head in line and there's excess extension, throw a couple towels under your head to brace your head up. And once again, make sure that the body is synchronizing these actions all together. One more time, you're gonna do two sets of 20 repetitions with 60 seconds in between to recover. And that would bring us to the end of this segment on integration. This brings us to the end of your mobility and release clinic. Make sure to apply the techniques that you learned today two to three times to optimize the results. If you have questions, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com or touch base with one of your movement specialists. As always, your body is designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time in class.